my daughter just didn't want to listen to anything I had to say. I tried to look out for her. I tried to make sure she was being raised properly and going down the right path, but it just seemed everything she did was out of control. Well, I just found out her boyfriend is almost a decade older than her, and I just don't want that to slide. So I decided to confront both of them, and this is what this guy had to say about my daughter. Potential, uh, trigger warning. I must begin this post like that just to caution those who have dealt with abusive partners. Please proceed only if you think you can handle such cases. This is particularly upsetting for me to write because this is about my daughter. And while I'm upset at her for her foolishness as her father, I'm also desperately worried about her. I promise I will not get into explicit details, but... I'll say this might stir up some strong feelings in you, whether it's anger or sadness. Okay, let us begin with the statement I've been gnawing at me all this time. How far should you let your children enjoy their freedom? Or let me rephrase it, what is the limit? Hey, this is Eric, I'm 39, and my teenage daughter has returned to me after an outing with a couple of her friends. As it claimed by her, bruised and with a few bandages wrapped around her limbs. The sight of her scared the hell out of me. I know for certain it was not what she claimed it to be, and how has it reached this situation? I have only an inclination, and today I'm going to share that with you. It's been a few days since, and I did a lot of thinking before coming here. It was necessary because her boyfriend had returned. Pardon me if I'm not coherent enough, it's about my daughter, and... I'm as scared as any other parent would be about their teenage daughter in this situation. I live in a small apartment with my daughter, Sophia. She's 18. It's a small enough apartment, but we've managed so far. I have no romantic partners except for this one lady that I've been seeing for some time. Though it certainly is not serious. Throughout those years and after my wife's death, I've raised Sophia on my own with little help from my family or the outside world. It was certainly not easy, but it worked out very, very long. Sophia was a promising child, but as she grew older, her ways of seeing the world changed. Certainly, like anyone else, I accepted this as an inheritance, but part of growing up. It was certainly that, but in the wrong direction. Sophia started to love money. I'm unsure how that started, and I've worked as a software engineer for nearly 15 years now, so although not much money has come pretty easy in my life, even then I must admit that there were a few demands from my daughter that I could really not fulfill. Maybe it was because of that, I'm not sure, but anyways, Sophia started to love money, and that meant she wanted one thing or the other, and for the most part, I was able to fulfill her wishes, but not for all. It was after she was caught stealing from her homeroom teacher's purse that I realized the situation has gotten really bad. She was only eight years old at that time, but the way that she defended herself had made me cautious about a lot of things. Some of my family members warned me about it, mostly dismissed it. They all agreed on one thing, though. Sophia will learn to behave over time, but guys, she did not. Instead, she got worse. Although her love for money was already there, she got a little more rebellious, and it often got her in trouble. Mostly, though, it got her in contact with random people that none would have seen coming. I would tell her to be cautious around her new friends, and a new argument would blow up between us. I would try to talk to her, and she would listen, but refuse to listen, really. I would ground her, and she would distance herself from me, these little rebellions only helped her so much, but they did give hints that I had to be very careful about her. Unfortunately, work kept me busy, and she started lying. A lot. For months and years, I could not differentiate between her lies and her truth. Yes, that's embarrassing, but it is what it is. The first time I realized things might be going in the wrong direction for my daughter was when I found her hanging out with a much older dude. She said it was her boyfriend, but clearly looked like he was at least 25. It was wrong in itself. Sophia was only 16 years old at the time, and that clearly meant jail time for that dude. But he escaped. I threatened to beat him to a pulp. 
and he got scared and left, and you should have seen the fit Sophia threw after that. It almost reminded me of my late wife. Yeah, there's a reason for that, Catherine. My wife had a history of the same. She had run away with the much older dude when she was 15, and the police could not find her for two weeks. It was only after somebody sent the police an anonymous tip that they saw a young girl with an older man around some parts of the city, and they found her drugged in a shady-looking building. She was brought back, and everybody expected that she would learn her lesson, but she did not. To be very honest, maybe that's the reason I did not feel much surprise when Sophia started moving the same way. She had heard stories about her mom, and it clearly got into her head. Catherine's death was a very tragic one, and I clearly don't want the same for my daughter. So, I tried talking to her, and in frustration, I even resorted to some more strict ways of making her understand why it was all so wrong. She never did understand, though. What she learned was to hide it better. She no longer met with her boyfriends around our home, and she never discussed such things with me. It's not for the increasing number of souvenirs and expensive gifts in her bedroom. I would not have any suspicions about her at all. In easier words, she could easily be successful actress and nobody would bat an eyelash, but things were okay even then. But then her grades started dropping, and by the time she reached her high school, and I will sound very harsh when I say this, she was easily, easily considered the dumbest person in her class. She did not have basic knowledge, her grammar was lacking, and so was her general knowledge. Do not ask me about her math, it was very bad. I was worried about her, but she had absolutely no interest in taking it seriously anyways. She had no other interest, but it did not matter for her. For her, she had her entire life planned out for her. Her planning, well, you already know, keep rich people around you, follow their words, say yes to their yes, and no to their no. Because of this, she had difficulty getting into a college as well, so we both agreed on a gap year. She promised that she would invest a year learning something nice, and I did not shame her for anything at all, because I was glad that she was at least thinking of that. Of course, it was short-lived. She asked for money for some fancy music class, and I provided her with everything I could. I even bought her an expensive piano. She seemed interested for a while, but within a couple of months, I knew I had just wasted thousands of dollars for absolutely nothing. I learned pieces faster than she even thought of learning them. Then, some eight or nine months ago, she changed. She stayed out of home longer than expected of her, and I knew that she must have made friends, but I expected them to be from her music class. You know, people her age. Unfortunately, it was not until the moment I was writing this post that I found out who it actually was. Sophia had promised that she was not dating anybody, and I was so relieved. Last week, she came to my room and asked me if she could go out with a couple of her friends. I asked her all the necessary questions, and she even answered them cautiously, as if she had prepared her answers in advance. But I was still not suspicious. She had her iPhone with her all the time, and I had all the important numbers, so I let her go. She had said that she would be back on Thursday, but she returned on Tuesday morning. Bruised and with bandages around her limbs. Scared, I asked her several questions and wondered if we should go to the hospital. She just said that she was fine, and that it's all because of an accident. She even said I could call her friend Vanessa, if I did not believe her. She just sounded so confident that I did believe her. I think that was my first mistake. She refused to go to her music classes, and even remained in her bedroom throughout the day. She sometimes helped me with the cooking, but that was all. We had these little small talks, and to be very honest, this was the closest she's ever been with me for a long time. For some days, I believed I was getting her back, but of course, it was only during that time that her, quote, boyfriend returned. Now, this is interesting. He looks like any of her other boyfriends, aka much older. I placed his age somewhere around 27 or 28. He was muscled up and everything, and he had introduced himself as Ethan, although he seemed very well-mannered and polite. 
he immediately asked to talk to Sophia. I did not want him near my daughter, but Sophia ran up to him. They talked, and I observed their interactions, and I did not know if I could trust Ethan, but he managed to bring a smile to my daughter's face. And he promised to meet her again and left, and he had left her a gift. When he left, Sophia came to me and told me all about him. She says he's 21, but looks a lot older because he works so hard. Then, in a fragile voice, she told me that she wanted to shift in with her boyfriend. Like any other father, I said, hell no. But it made her upset. She has since locked herself in her bedroom and threatened to leave my home without telling me. So here I am, asking you guys, what am I supposed to do? What can I do? Talking has never worked with Sophia. What chances are that it will now? Top comments from the original post, comment number one. Let me be honest with you, your daughter's worried the heck out of me. I don't have children and I'm only engaged to a man, but I'm genuinely thinking if I should even have children. I mean, this all sounds like a headache. Besides the moral part, raising children is no joke. Especially because you have to teach them so much, but you'll never know what else that they'll get into. An 18-year-old girl who's already given up on working hard and wants rich boyfriends? Uh, might need a reality check, and I'm sorry if I sounded harsh there. Maybe do a background check on the boyfriend before letting her go. Comment number two. Look, I don't know why I think this way, but Ethan is a red flag. I don't know why, but he is. I mean, the fact that he came to talk to your daughter only a couple days after the daughter came home bruised. What are the chances that she never went out with her friend and instead was with this guy, her boyfriend? There's something really fishy going on and I want you to move. Seriously, before she gets hurt, do something and think back to the day. Was your daughter acting different around him? Comment number three. I can't believe you're letting your daughter get away with this. You need to be a lot stricter. I don't know how you can live with yourself, knowing that your daughter is out there dating a man twice her age. She's a minor, and he's most likely a predator. You're a terrible parent. You're lucky that your daughter has not gotten herself into even more trouble. Wake the heck up before it's too late. Update number one. So she did it. I had been at my job, and when I came back, Sophia was no more at my house. She had gracefully left a note, though, and it promised that she would be back in a few days, and I should not worry about her. I was worried as hell! So, I immediately contacted some of the family members to talk to them about this, and unfortunately, for the most part, instead of being helpful, they were only accusing. They raised their fingers at me and told me that I've gone wrong somewhere. They brought Catherine into the conversation and claimed that they were really surprised by Sophia's habits. It came with the blood, they said. It made me angry. They were not being helpful at all, and I bid them each a quick farewell and then took leave for the next day. I had contact with a few friends of Sophia, so I asked them about her and her boyfriend, Ethan, and out of all of them, only Vanessa knew a little about it. She said Ethan was actually 29 years old, and basically a trust fund baby. Sophia and he met at a party that she snuck into instead of going to her music class. They immediately picked up and started dating, and it happened months ago. Vanessa did not know anything other than that, and the only meaningful thing that she said was that she was pretty sure Ethan was abusive. She admitted she was a little jealous of Sophia because Ethan gave her everything that she asked for. But still, she was glad that she did not have a boyfriend like him, which, although somewhat confusing, made sense to me. I knew I needed to look further into this Ethan's background. A trust fund baby, all biases aside, is never good news. But the worst part is... Abusive? Someone asked me if Sophia looked scared or different, and now that I think about it, maybe. Both mentally and physically, I don't know, I cannot be sure. Yeah, it's true that he seemed to overpower her. She even seemed a little hesitant to touch him. It was Ethan who had to pull her in for a hug, and may I add a little forcefully? 
I called her several times and she picked up and I asked her to return at once and she threw a fit. I threatened to report to the police if she did not. It seemed to do something to her and she promised to return the next day. The next day that she did, she had once again fresh bruises on her body and she tried to hide them behind baggy clothing that seemed to be in fashion these days, but I caught them anyways. She looked like she had not had a good night's sleep in ages and there were bags under her eyes. Her skin looked dull and I knew something was going horribly wrong. I tried talking to her and I promise you I did try so much, but... She had little to answer, each time that she had something else to explain her bruises. Eventually, she got sick of explaining her bruises and just stopped trying to keep up with her lies. She would just start lying randomly. One time, she said she slipped on the bathroom floor. One time, she fell down a flight of stairs. Another time, she did not look before crossing the road. It was maddening. I was losing my patience, and I almost did lose my patience, but I kept my anger in. I knew I had to tread carefully. If what I believed to be true, then it was a very sensitive case. One night, a few weeks after Sophia returned from Ethan's home, she broke down. She admitted, and I'm not sure how it came to be that Ethan had hurt her. I asked her what he had done, and she answered that he had physically hurt her, well, I was angry, and you could see it on my face. She knew that. I told her that I would kill that son of a gun, and would go to jail if I had to, and something changed in her almost immediately. She starts sobbing and asking me not to do anything, please. She looked so desperate and scared that I did not know what to make of it, so I tried to look calm and told her that though I would not kill him, I would call the police. That man is not getting away with it, and instead of agreeing, she kept repeating, Don't do it, please. When I asked her, and quote, Why I should not, and, you know, he's hurt my daughter. He's going to pay for it. She just looked at me and answered that if I told the police, Ethan would do something worse. I don't know what she meant by that. What should I do? I've decided not to let Sophia go to Ethan's again, but... I still do not understand what's happening. Also to the one commenter, I'm not a terrible parent. I agree I'm having difficulty dealing with the situation, but I swear I'm not terrible. I'm here to ask for help because I know if I do not take any action right now, it may result in something way worse. Update number two. Hey guys, I know it's been a few weeks, but I have a good reason for my long absence. This may sound weird and I may be in the wrong, but honestly at this point, who the duck cares? I will kill Ethan. I don't care for anyone or anything at this point. I mean, listen, that man, that man has done something that no father will leave him alive for. The moment I see him, I swear to goodness, he better hope that the police find him first because I'm going to kill him. Some of you did hint, but... What I found is still worse than anything I expected. Sure, after Sophia said that Ethan could do something worse, I had slight inclinations that some stupid moment had led to, well, an even more stupid decision. But I was still not sure what they could be. I had an idea, however, but nothing else. But then Ethan returned and he looked terrible this time. His face was unshaven and he looked savage. I decided not to open the door for him, and I knew he meant trouble. He said he needed to talk to Sophia, and I said she was not at home, and even though she was, I would not allow her to meet him. This made him so mad. Like your typical rich baby started acting up. I told him that if he did not leave my premises, I would call the police, and he was angry and wanted to do mean things, but it was clear he did not want trouble with the police. Before leaving, he growled at Sophia that if she did not contact him by the end of the day, and I quote, I promise it'll be very bad for you, Sophie. Sophia looked very scared after hearing that, and she even tried to follow her. Well, I stopped her, but he didn't seem to have expected her to follow him because he stayed in front of my house in his car for a very long time. Sophia starts to sob, something I must admit scared the hell out of me. But I did not allow her to follow him. It was obvious that she was scared and worried about something. She looked for her phone and I hid it from her. 
I wanted to understand the situation. She looked like a maniac. For a very long time, she only screamed and cried, and she even tried to lock herself in the bedroom. I really could not understand anything. I promise I was so scared. I nearly called my mom to help me with this thing. Fortunately, she calmed down after some hours, and I gave her water and asked her what was going on. I must have looked just as scared because she started crying again. Although, a lot more softer this time. So, I said I was going to ruin her life, and I look at her in confusion with her hair all messed up, and her face was so red and wet, and I'm giving you an idea what she looked like. Please, try to understand how scared I was. Then she said that she had something to show me. She asked for her phone, unlocked it, and gave it to me, and this was a chat that she had shared with Ethan. I noticed that the internet was off, and she clearly did not want him to know that she was online. Besides the kind of messages lovers share, there were... Well, there were photos. Lots and lots of photos, some of them shared by Sophia herself, but I skipped them all. Within the next 10 minutes, I found out that Ethan had been blackmailing her with all the pictures that she shared, and he edited them. There were little clips too, but I did not want to open them. Somehow I knew what they were. I threw the phone away and sat next to her, and I honestly did not know what to say. This was the kind of mess that I had only seen movie characters go through. She said she was so sorry and she did not know it would end up like this, and he had promised her luxurious items every single time that he asked for pictures or videos, and she had given them each time. Until recently, when she wanted to get out of the relationship, he blackmailed her that if she tried to do that, he would just leak the pictures. This is what he had warned her about, and then she said that she was not the only person. Ethan had done this with a few other girls as well. For a very long time, I did not know what to do about this. I certainly was not going to share it with any of my family members, not even with my parents. So I had to handle this on my own, with the help of the police. I told Sophia this bit and she started crying again. She was clearly scared that this would mean Ethan would release everything. But I promised nothing like that would occur. I asked her to contact the other girls too and... Ethan was foolish enough to send the threats through a text message. But it was good for me because that man was going to get it. Really, really bad. She contacted the other girls and I contacted the police. And we had some evidence already and I guess the police only needed a little more uh, and a confession. But the moment I reached Ethan's house, the police next to me, I knocked a couple teeth out of his ugly mouth. Hang on tight, everyone. Now you'll know what happens to people like Ethan And the next update. Update number three. Ethan will have to register himself as an offender. You know what I'm talking about. Sophia was not the only victim. There were several girls younger and older than her. Essentially, that means there was a lot of evidence against Ethan. His rich family tried their best to help him out of it, but it did not work. His confidence added to the severity of the crime, resulting in an uproar of sorts. Many people wanted him dead, but most of all just wished for a proper sentence for him. Thankfully, that happened, and for once I was glad our justice system worked. In essence, he would have to serve jail time of 23 years, and without parole. What he had committed is basically a federal crime, and... You know how bad that is. Sophia and two other girls are still teenagers, so he's been charged with exploitation and keeping videos, and due to the not safe for work, I'm not allowed to, well, say a lot about it, so I'll keep a few words as a hint. You know what I'm talking about when I say type of pictures. Essentially, Ethan will serve 23 years. Besides the exploitation of a minor, he's also heavily charged with blackmailing. You can be sure our system does not take lightly at all to that, and besides that, he's also charged with battery and assault in a particular girl's case. She lied to her parents just as Sophia lied to me. Physically, her condition was way worse than Sophia's, even though nothing in this situation is worth comparing. You should see his damn face, though. With a couple broken teeth and his parents weeping by his side, they made up a ridiculous family picture. 
When the judge sentenced him to 23 years, they begged him to lessen it because, quote, Our Ethan is still so young. This will ruin his life. That made me mad. How could they do that? How could they just want their son to be free after what he's done? How could any parent? I don't understand. The judge humored them, and he asked what they thought would be an appropriate sentence in this case. They said five years. Yeah, you heard that right. The judge pointed at his seven victims standing there, including Sophia, and reminded them all the girls were younger than Ethan, and he tried to ruin their lives. So the sentence that the court has announced is the right decision. This is the final decision, and they could, well, challenge it whenever they want. They promised that they would. Mostly to Ethan than to any of us, though. Well, that was about Ethan, now about Sophia. Well, she's doing good. Pretty much, sure, you and I know this wound will take a while to heal, but that day will come. I'm sure of it. She talks very little, but I believe that comes with the shame of it all. Perhaps she's just embarrassed about all of it. I don't know. I've done my best not to make her feel that way, though. I've not said a word to shame her or insult her, though it's true I've shared a few words of advice with her. But you can expect a father to do that, especially after all that's happened, right? She's continued with her music class and has even learned a new piece. She has also told me she wants to work. It's a small, convenient store, but she insists on starting from there. And I don't want to force her, so maybe I'll suggest better places after a while. At least this seems like the beginning of something better. I don't like to drink, but dear lord, I would love to share a beer with you right now. Top comments from the final update, comment number one. He better not drop the soap, just saying, LOL. I still feel like mothers do a better job at raising kids alone than men do. I don't know, that's just my thought though, and glad that you saved her before it could have gotten worse, or maybe even worse than worse. These cases are definitely very sensitive, and Ethan could have damaged your daughter really badly. Though, I'm pretty sure that she's done this fair share of damaging already. These things scare the duck out of me, because how the heck are we supposed to know what's going on in our kids' heads? Comment number two. Social media sucks. In simpler words, I'm pretty sure that she met a lot of bad people in her life because of it. But mostly... Social media is filled with rubbish and nonsense people with nonsense ideas. I'm not saying it's all bad. It's not all good. They're teaching our kids the quote easy way and uh, I don't know. I want it gone. He deserves worse than worse though and I hope he gets it. So the comment section was not really <laughs> on Ethan's side. That's for sure. A lot of people were saying how this monster did this to seven of other underage girls, and 20 years in prison is just not long enough. He should have gotten a life sentence. That's what a lot of the comments said. I do want to know your opinion on this. Do you think Ethan deserved 23 years in prison? Do you think he deserved the longer, shorter? Or maybe do you agree with the family, who said five years is enough time for this punishment? Drop your opinions in your comments down below. Let's discuss this one. Ultimately, though, tell me what you would do in OP's position, knowing your daughter was going through something absolutely terrible. How do you handle it? Maybe you've been in a situation like this already. Let me know. My name's Mr. Redito. I narrate stories every single day. I hope you enjoyed this story today, and if you want more daily videos, the three best ways to see the videos and support the channel is subscribing, liking the video if you enjoyed it, and drop a comment down below. I'll see you guys tomorrow, and just remember it's cool to be kind. See ya.